Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real, it's 1971, part one. We've got our Mars transfer window where we're going to be sending our first ever manned Mars mission. But before we get to that, we've got a few operations to do around the moon. We've had a crew on Basie McBase Face for a year. We're going to be bringing them back, and we're going to send our first crew to Community Station. At the start of this episode, I just want to show some artwork that has been submitted over on the Discord. So we have Longsword and Community Station by Mr. Prez, and then we have a great pixel art of Broadsword by a potato with an aginata. Thank you for submitting those. They look absolutely amazing. But anyway, with that being done, let's get on to the episode, and we are going to be sending Beastly Pig and the Space Boy back home after having spent an entire year on Basie McBaseface, on Basie McBaseface, on the moon at Basie McBaseface. We're going to bring them back to the ECMS, and I wanted to send them back home straight away, but unfortunately, I brought the crew that were on the ECMS back home instead. So that's Jane Jones, Yosef Marks, and Snake Cake. These guys had been on the ECMS for a year anyway, so they were meant to come back home, but I did want to send those two that had been on the moon, who had also witnessed the tragic death of Aspect Fanning back first. So what we're going to have to do is we are going to send up a replacement crew on the 14th of Feb. This is going to be Lunar Shuttle number 12, and on board are Rahul Manon, Sono Hero, and Cohen Force. And yeah, it is just a replacement mission just to send up a new crew to the ECMS so we can get those two back home. They have spent a very, very long time on the moon, and I am sure they are missing all of the comforts of actually having solid ground. I mean, they were on solid ground, they were on the surface, but you know, it is a low gravity environment. I'm sure they would love love to actually experience 1G again rather than the very small amount of gravity on the surface of the moon. But we rendezvoused with the ECMS and now it is time to send Beastly Pig and the Space Boy back home. This time we got the right guys. So now we are going to be launching our first ever Broadsword Space Shuttle. This was designed in a live stream and what we're going to be doing is we are going to be going to Community Station to send the first ever crew there. On board this shuttle we have Albert Harper, we have Phil, we have Astros and we have Danny Morales. This shuttle has been launched on the 7th of April and it is powered by four RS-25 SSME space shuttle main engines on the actual orbiter. And then we have two RSRMs giving us enough thrust to get us off the launch pad. So it is very similar to the actual space shuttle. We've just got one more SSME because we wanted to take a lot of payload up. I wanted this shuttle to be able to send my Pegasus 2 transfer stage up to space so we could send Mars and Venus missions off in the actual bay of this shuttle, which will make, well, sending missions over to those far-flung planets a little bit cheaper in the fact that we can reuse the launch vehicle that actually gets them up to space. I say reuse the launch vehicle, we aren't going to be able to reuse the external tanks, but we can reuse the orbiter, we can reuse the engines, and that's the expensive part of this mission. So, we have made our way into orbit for the first time with a broadsword shuttle. Let's open up those cargo bay doors and actually deploy the solar panels so we can get enough electricity so that the shuttle doesn't run out and cause all kinds of issues. We wouldn't, <laughs> we really wouldn't want that. So, with that being done, it is time to target community station, actually plot ourselves a maneuver node so we can rendezvous with that station. One thing I do want to say about the Broadsword Shuttle, it uses exactly the same OMS as the Longsword did, so two AJ-10 190s. You can see we've got a burn of 78.3 meters per second of Delta V. That burn is going to take us 2 minutes and 24 seconds. Yes, they are really, well, they don't have an awful lot of thrust. It's going to take a while for us to actually complete that burn, but we need to get to that burn first, so we're going to skip around the Earth just a few times 
before we get to our designated maneuver node. There we go. I did start the burn on this a little bit early because I was a bit of a melon and I didn't actually turn the shuttle in time to perform that maneuver. Rather dense of me, but there we go. We can see Community Station has now come into sight and we're gonna fire up those engines one final time to actually slow ourselves down. I like to get within 200 meters of our target. That way, once we actually either physical time warp or just use general time warp, well, the target won't go flying all over the place. We have now deployed our payload. So this was going to be a docking adapter so that we could actually dock to Community Station. Unfortunately, I forgot to put any fuel in it, so that thing is completely useless. So I tried to actually dock anyway, and yeah, it didn't really work out. We couldn't actually connect the docking adapters because the cockpit of the broadsword was just in the way. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna leave Community Station about five minutes after we arrive. You can see I am actually using a maneuver node to try and bring my perigee down at a place where we should be landing on land. And it did work, it did work. We brought it down over Africa because we were at the completely wrong inclination to try and bring it down at Cape Canaveral. So. I wasn't going to try and do a runway landing for this shuttle, but you can see we kind of lost control a little bit at around 70,000 meters, but I did manage to actually get it back. Although it was a bit of a shallower descent than I would have ideally liked. And I think the reason why in hindsight that this happened is because I forgot to move some fuel around. I usually like emptying some of those back tanks to shift the center of mass around a little bit so that we can actually kind of get a bit of a better location for our center of mass compared to our center of lift. I forgot to do that and I'm completely blaming that for the reason why we did a little bit more of a dive than I would have liked to. But you can see we are coming down in the middle of the Middle East. Unfortunately, I can't show the landing as this was done on live stream and it got really stuttery. So sorry about that. On the 12th of May 1971, the white core tank and engines for the Demeter 1 transfer vehicle were finally rolled out to the launch pad. And it is time we go to Mars. This is going to be the first piece of the Mars transfer vehicle that we are going to be building in low Earth orbit, nicknamed Demeter. This is going to be a fuel tank, which also has the engines that we are going to be using for our transfer burn and for our capture burn at Mars. So what we're going to be using for those is going to be two HD3s because I did try and use nuclear engines for this. Unfortunately, I was having some really weird issue where on the launch pad, the nuclear engine would have a meltdown. And really, that's not a good thing. We don't want to be exposing everyone at the Space Center to incredible amounts of radiation because our nuclear engines have had a bit of a sour moment. So I really don't know what was causing that. It was either something to do with Kerbal Electronics, Kerbal Electronics, Kerbal Atomics, or near future electrical. Bit bizarre, but there we go. We can see that we have got the first part into orbit successfully. So now we're gonna be moving on to the side tanks, which are gonna be two tanks actually flanking that white tank. I didn't really talk about the launch vehicle in the last launch of this. This is going to be exactly the same. So this is a Leviathan Super Heavy. This launch vehicle is capable of launching up to 350 tons to low Earth orbit. And the only reason why I have designed a launch vehicle to get 350 tons to orbit is purely for these fuel tanks. They are so incredibly heavy. But we needed to get that kind of tonnage to orbit to actually put together our Mars transfer vehicle. Vehicle, so it's not too bad, I guess. They are rather expensive to launch though. So I'm quite glad that I only have to launch three of these. Anyway, the first stage is going to be powered by five F1A engines and four RSRM solid rocket boosters. So they do pack quite a punch. You can see we have two M1 engines for our second stage with this lovely camera in the interstage. There goes the first stage. 
as we fire up the M1 engines and make our way to orbit with the second of these rather ridiculously large fuel tanks. And once we do get to orbit, well, we are going to have to perform a few orbital maneuvers to actually rendezvous with the first tank. So to do that, we have advanced OTV engines, two of those from the Changing History mod. They are absolutely wonderful, those engines. They have an unlimited amount of uses. And yeah, they have got insane specific impulse, something like 492 in vacuum, I believe. They are rather, rather good. They do do run on Hydrolox as well and that was the main reason why I wanted to use them because the HD3s obviously also run on Hydrolox so I didn't need to have any separate tanks to actually do my orbital maneuvering to actually put this craft together in orbit. But there you go, we can see we have rendezvoused with the white tank and now it is just a case of slowing down, pointing ourselves at the tank again, burning those advanced OTV engines once again so we can actually get within 200 meters of that white tank so that we can hand over the reins to Mechjeb to finalize the docking of these two tanks in low earth orbit. Yes, I do really like Mechjeb to do these kind of docks for me because it's great. You can force the roll and have them exactly the way you want to. But there you go. We can see any minute now and we have bumped. So that brings us on to the third and final launch of one of the fuel tanks for the Demeter transfer vehicle. And I do have to say that this isn't the actual footage from when I launched these on the live stream. No, I did have to go back in and refilm everything because when I did it on the live stream, well, I was getting really stuttery frames and it just made everything look rubbish. So I spent quite a while trying to make this as cinematic as possible. I must have launched launched these about 10 times I reckon by the end of getting all of this footage. It took a really really long time to get absolutely everything that I wanted. But there we go, we can see we are now just about making orbit with our third and final fuel tank. And once again, once we do get into orbit, well, it is just a case of plotting out our maneuver node and rendezvousing with those two tanks now. Once those two tanks are all together, we will We'll be moving on to the habitation module and then finally the landing module. Yes, we are going to be landing on Mars when we go over. That is one of the aims and I did build the lander on a live stream as well quite a while ago now, I do believe. It's been a while since I've tested out that thing. I'm going to have to hope that when we do get to Mars that nothing goes wrong and that I'm going to be able to remember absolutely everything that I did. It's not really too much to worry though because I have tested absolutely everything out in a sandbox save and I know that everything works. I wouldn't have put together this entire craft if I didn't test and make sure that everything does work because this mission is incredibly expensive. This has cost over two and a half million funds just to build up all of the required vehicles for this mission. I did also have to build an extra unlimited size launch pad, which is another 2 million on top of that. But not to worry, we are going to be getting well over 20 million funds if we are successful in this mission. So we are going to be definitely be getting back our investment. But there you go. The third and final tank is now coming into dock and we are ready to send up the HAB module. On the 23rd of May 1971, the Demeter 1 habitation module has all been finished and rolled out to the launch pad and it is time to launch this to rendezvous with the Demeter 1 transfer vehicle. Can we really call it the Demeter 1 transfer vehicle? Yeah, it's three engines and three fuel tanks. It's more than three engines, it's six engines, there's two HD3 engines on each stage. I don't know what I'm talking about, but anyway, this HAB module is going to be launched by a slightly modified Leviathan. It can carry about 250 tons to low Earth orbit, this version. The only difference is, well, we've got two UA1205 solid rocket motors on the side. I needed a little bit more than the standard Leviathan could actually provide to get this to orbit. So what the habitation module has, well, what it contains, it is a living space for our three crew for the entire duration of their mission to Mars. 
So what we have done is we have packed it full of shielding. Well, not completely full of shielding. Shielding that will hopefully mitigate any solar radiation over the three, two, three year mission that they are going to be performing. I think it's about two and a half years all in that this mission is going to take. We've also got all of our life support, all of our food, water and oxygen in this. There are enough supplies in this to last four years or three crew. So that should be more than enough than we're going to need. We do not need that much. I just wanted to bring a little bit extra just in case. And you know, we don't know. The crew might get a bit hungry. They might decide to delve into some more snacks than they are rationed. <laughs> So we don't know. We we have packed extra just to make sure. We also have enough living space for our three astronauts to be comfortable for the entire duration of the mission. So I am able to check all of these things using Kerbalism. The menu of Kerbalism when you're in the vehicle assembly building does inform you of all of these kind of parameters that you need to be aware of when you are sending a crewed mission. So I made sure that everything worked and then I built it all up. We are fast on our way to orbit with the habitation module. You can see it there. The fairings did deploy and yeah, it's just kind of like a long place for our astronauts to live. It's not just the habitation module though. In the white cone, we do have our transfer stage to send us back to Earth once we are done with all of our activities around Mars. Once again, that's going to be using a HG3 engine. I'm really kind of in love with using those engines for interplanetary stuff at the moment. That seems to be all I am using. I did mention earlier, it would be nice to have some kind of nuclear engine, but yes, I was running into issues with that. But we are definitely in orbit now. And once again, we are just going to be plotting out our maneuver node so that we can actually rendezvous with the rest of that transfer vehicle. And what I did have to do with this, I did actually launch the lander in between this rendezvous because it was going to take us over a day for our maneuver. So I thought we might as well launch the lander whilst we were waiting. But I have decided in kind of... This video's sake, we will do all of the separate modules at the same time. So just bear in mind that there will be a bit of jumping backwards and forwards through time in this video. So we have now come across the rest of the transfer vehicle. It is time to slow ourselves down, point both of those vehicles at each other, and then just slowly ease them into dock. So I did do that for this. I did select each one and just point them at the target. It made docking a lot easier when, yeah, when you're docking like this. But there you go. We can see any minute now and we will dock the hab to the transfer vehicle. So now we're on to the last module of the Demeter transfer vehicle, and that is going to be the actual lander, the lander that is going to land on Mars and hopefully stay on the surface for around 30 days. We do have enough life support in this lander to actually accomplish that. It is going to hopefully send down two crew. This has been launched on the 24th of May 1971, a day after we launched the habitation module. So this lander was actually relatively cheap to get into orbit. We are using an Adventurer 2, one of my smaller launch vehicles. I say smaller, I still think it is capable of lifting 32 tons to low Earth orbit, so it's a pretty beefy rocket anyway, but it's a lot cheaper than any of the Leviathans that we have been using. So the actual transfer window to Mars coincides around the 1st of June. Now, the reason why I am putting up all of these vehicles now is I wanted to make sure that I had enough time for them all to rendezvous with each other rather than having to panic and kind of noticing that, yeah, like the last module that I launched, the habitation module, the rendezvous maneuver node for that was two days. So I kind of wanted to try and get it as close to the transfer window as possible, whilst also giving myself a little bit of leeway to actually rendezvous everything together. But talking of rendezvousing, there we go. We can see we are now coming up to Demeter for the final time for a part that is going to be attached to it. Obviously, we are going to send up one more mission to this, and that's to send up a crew. 
which we will once again be using a broadsword space shuttle to actually get those crew up there. Might as well use those shuttles. <laughs> I have designed them for that reason entirely. But there it is. Demeter is finished. And what we're going to do is we are just going to send the transfer stage, not the transfer stage, the OMS stage for the lander back home crashing down. But with that, Demeter is done. And we are ready to send up a crew and head out to Mars. It's the 27th of May 1971 and Broadsword Angervadal has been rolled out to the launch pad ready to begin its ascent to the Demeter transfer vehicle. On board we have Oliver Arrowwood, we have Kerberdyne and we have Felix U. Fox. Felix U. Fox has been given a special place on this mission, being the artist who designed the decals for these shuttles. So I do want to shout out Felix U. Yes, he did all of the decals for these space shuttles and they look absolutely fantastic. If you want to, go check out his YouTube channel as well. He is doing a series called Odyssey at the moment and it is quite possibly the best cinematic experience you will ever see in KSP. It is wonderful. So this launch of Angervadal actually has two purposes. We are going to be sending, obviously, our crew to the Demeter transfer vehicle, but we have a payload inside our cargo bay, and that is going to be a mission to send to Vesta, and we are hopefully going to get all kinds of scans of Vesta. The actual probe that we have in there has an altimetry scanner, it has a biome scanner, and it also has a high resolution altimetry scanner. But unfortunately, due to some design flaws, we are unable to release the payload. So we get Kerberdine out to go and have a look and see if we can fix anything. Unfortunately, we cannot. So we are going to keep the payload in the payload bay. We do have enough fuel to actually rendezvous with the Demeter transfer vehicle, despite having a heavier load than we initially anticipated. You can see me now. I am actually making sure that I turn around to face our relative velocity way before we actually get there, because these shuttles do take a little bit of time to actually maneuver themselves in space. But we are within range of the Demeter transfer vehicle. Cool. So we are going to get Kerberdine now. He's going to make his way over using his RCS pack. Unfortunately, when I designed the Demeter vehicle, I did not take into consideration that Broadsword would be bringing our crew. I was going to use a Lunar Shuttle, and there are no docking ports on that transfer vehicle for the Broadsword. So we are going to have to get the astronauts out one at a time and send them flying over to the vehicle. But I guess it's not too much of an issue. They were able to actually get over. And finally, Demeter has a crew, and we are ready to go to Mars. So the crew on board Demeter are going to make their way back to Earth on board the Apollo capsule that is part of the Demeter transfer vehicle. So what we're going to do now is we are going to attempt to return Angervadal back home, despite the fact that we have an additional payload that we weren't anticipating, which is really going to throw off our center of mass and center of lift completely. Well, it won't throw off our center of lift, but our center of mass will be drastically changed. This time I did remember to dump fuel though, so we do have that, although, yeah, the fact that we still have our payload inside means that we have a really awkward center of mass. The payload is actually quite heavy as well. It is a Pegasus 2, so it weighs around 30 tons all in. And you can see when we hit 80,000 meters, well, we did start to lose control. So in order to regain control, I had to change from using MechJeb Smart ASS to Atmospheric Autopilot. Unfortunately, using Atmospheric Autopilot, you can only nose up so far. I mean, it probably is due to the design of this craft and how the center of mass was all shifted anyway. But at about 46,000 meters, we completely lost it. You can see now that we have gone into a bit of a spiral, a bit of a spin. We lose some of the wings and that only makes matters worse. And then finally, 
To really seal Anger Vidal's fate, well, the avionics unit decides to blow up. Despite the fact that it was protected by a payload bay, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Which is a shame, because now we are probably more than capable of flying this thing. Unfortunately, we just don't have the control. And because we don't have control, well... We end up smashing into the ground. But we do manage to recover most of the shuttle, fortunately. It could have been a lot worse. Once again, we are going to go back in time. So during the construction process of Demeter, Sia-1, Callisto Lander-1, aka Spider-1, did actually arrive at Jupiter on the 20th of May. So all we had to do here was a quick burn to actually slow ourselves down. I wanted to put us in a very, very elliptical orbit, so it would be a lot easier to rendezvous with Callisto. And then hopefully, if we get a good rendezvous, and if we get a good capture around Callisto, well, we will definitely have more than enough Delta V to actually land on that moon. And you can see here, I am plotting out my maneuver to actually perform that. And you know what? We are going to have a ludicrous amount of Delta V left when we actually capture at Callisto. In fact, we're probably going to have enough to land with our Jupiter maneuvering stage rather than the actual lander stage. I might have to check that when it comes to it. But yeah, we have a lot and we are going to be landing. So now we are going to return to Earth for the final time in this episode. It is time for Demeter to make its way to Mars. On the 1st of June, we are going to be firing up those six HG3 engines and we are going to be getting Oliver Arrowood, Kerbodyne and Felix U. Fox on their merry way to the red planet. There we go. We are just ullaging our engines now. And there we go. We have ignition on all six of the HD3 engines, even though it was only five there. Once again, I did a quick save to come back and get a few more cinematics for this sequence. So they did all fire up. But on the second time when I was trying to get different footage, they decided not to work, which is a bit of a shame. But oh, well, I didn't want to do it again. So you can see we are burning those engines now. So I did make a custom action group so I could release those two fuel tanks on the side by undocking them. And as soon as that was done, well, we are just burning those last two HG3s. Mech Jeb, because I used it to complete the maneuver because I wanted to get cinematics, it kind of made us spiral a little bit out of control once we'd finished that burn. But there you go. We can see we are going to be heading to Mars. And now, it's just a long old trip until we get to the red planet. So now with Demeter on its way, that will be the end of 1971 part one. And I do want to let everyone know that this is going to be the penultimate episode of Kerbal Gets Real. Basically, my game is now running at a snail's pace. What I want to do is I want to start a fresh save with a fresh new install. And hopefully it means that I can run things a little bit smoother. But do not worry. My Realism Overhaul series is not going away. It will just be a new save. I've got some some ideas, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So what we're going to be doing next episode is we are going to be following up Demeter. We will finish that mission. We will finish all of the missions that I have got going on. And then probably at the very end, we are going to deorbit absolutely everything. Kind of curious to see what it's like to send a 300 ton space station smashing into the surface of the moon. But we will see that in the next episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, why not give it a like? If you've really enjoyed it and want to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.